geeky classic rock. Can you say uh, Samantha? I can certainly say Samantha. <laughs> Samantha, you okay? You're on the air live. A little delay reaction. Were you, were, were you having like a like a little crying fit there? Were you laughing your butt off? Or what? No. no, she's thinking I'm we're nuts. Just, just waiting and hiding in, in, in the wings there. But happy to be here. Hello. Samantha, you know what? No, no more do you need to hide in the wings because you know what? You are here. And I can't believe your story. It's It's so cool. Eight years ago... You moved here from Jersey to L.A. to live out your dream. You have released several songs. You are a Grammy-nominated artist, and you have a brand-new holiday song called Christmas in L.A. I love it. Samantha Aurelio is here to tell us about what I'm guessing to be a pretty interesting journey. Hey, Samantha. Hello, hello. To be followed up by Journey themselves. (laughs) So do you like Journey? Journey. I'm a fan. I'm oh, a fan. All right, good. What's your favorite song? That That's probably my favorite song right there. Really? Any way you want it. All right, so have you seen anyone from Journey in L.A.? Because you're in L.A., you can see everybody. No, I can't say that I have. But, I, I mean, I've seen my fair share of <laughs> celebrities here in L.A., for sure. Oh, we're going to talk all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Samantha, you have a brand new holiday song I love it, Christmas in L.A., and I have to ask you the question. You know, you moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. I kind of feel like in the song, you're missing the East Coast just a little bit. Just a little bit. I got to say, it's it's something. So I have been here since 2013, and I feel like every year I'm reminded that it's just a little different. Time doesn't move in the same way. I feel like on the East Coast, you know, you feel the seasons change. It's almost like time is is moving around you um and here in la it's and i can't complain it's beautiful it's still sunny here because it's only 3 30 here um but lucky it's, you know, it's 70 and sunny you know and while that is a beautiful thing it feels very stagnant you know after a while you just kind of like hmm, it's the same same day you're kind of on groundhog's day here so i do miss the 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 change of the seasons and i will say that any east coaster that i've talked to feels the same even though they are never too upset about it being 70 and sunny here. How could you be? How could you be? But what what made you decide now was the time to write a song like that? Well, you know, I feel that every winter, I feel like I've kind of been writing this song, like, mentally for the last eight years that I've been here. And um, I found myself um, with this wonderful co-writer. Her name is Gracie Martin. And um, I kind of spitballed this idea out to her uh, one day in one of our writing sessions and kind of played her through like some chord progressions and and the melody that I was thinking of. And and she kind of helped pull it out of me. And she and I made this song. and And it's, I'm really proud of it because I really feel like we've done a really good job of of molding the emotion of how I feel around this time of year every time. Now, do you feel like it's better when you have someone to, like you say, pull it out of you, or do you like writing songs alone? You know, I have always written by myself, like alone, in a room, with my piano. Um, And this year, I met Gracie and she and I have just this really great writing connection um, and I have I've been really proud of the work that we've done I, I've i been writing pretty much alone my whole life but I am really proud of the music that we're making now that I've found a collaborator so I'm not going to say one way is better than the other um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with a, with a co-write right now That's awesome. And I guess it's just, you know, it's a fluid situation. If something is working for you today, you just go with it until it, you know, maybe you have to adapt and change to another way. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to be going with the flow. Oh, yeah. We that's that's life, right? (laughs) For sure. (laughs) So you say you've been songwriting pretty much your whole life. How did it start for you, though? Songwriting. Hmm. Um, Well, I've I've been in kind of like the music world my whole life my dad was a 70s 
semi-professional guitar player, and he played, you know, around Bruce Springsteen, and he played at Clarence's wedding reception, and I've just kind of been around music for a really long time, and um, I think when I went off to college, I found myself in a lot of piano rooms. I went to an art school in Philadelphia, and um, around then is when I started. I used to just sing other people's songs uh, at, like, talent shows, um, and I found myself around 18 just like fiddling around on the piano and creating my own melodies and and that's really when I started songwriting so so we have to back up the truck for just a second your dad played with Bruce Springsteen and played at Clarence Clemens wedding like hello he didn't didn't play with Bruce Springsteen but we are from that area of New Jersey Um, and he was playing I asked him this story recently actually he was playing a um, residency gig at this bar in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and Clarence Clemens' wedding reception ended up there on the night that he was playing, so he ended up playing. <laughs> oh, how does that happen? How does... Isn't oh. that wild? Oh, yeah, you know what? It's just Clarence Clemens. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just here. We're just gonna play at his wedding reception. Yeah, they just kind of walked in and, and <laughs> the, you know, the reception kind of like wandered into where my dad was already playing. <laughs> That is on happenstance, you know, going with the flow. <laughs> so what did your dad say when you said, you know what, listen, I'm out of here. I'm going to L.A. Did he support that or did he say, listen, hon, you know what, maybe you should think twice? Um, well, I was a little afraid to tell my dad, so I told him very late. Um, like I was like, by the way, I'm moving in like three weeks. What? <laughs> it was very late in the game, but my dad has always been super supportive. My whole family's been very supportive of me and like my music career. Um, I did try to move to New York City. I feel like everything was kind of working against me. Um, and then when I went, okay, I'll just move to LA. Like everything fell in my lap: a place to live, a place to work, like. A, mode of transportation i i did ride my bike here for nine months because i didn't have a car but i someone did give me a bike and um i just feel like the stars kind of aligned whenever i decided okay la is the place let's let's do this but where were you at in your life when you were still in jersey and you made that decision inside of your mind that you were leaving you were going to la to live out your dream well I would say I was a little (laughs) discouraged almost. I had graduated college and just moved home from Philadelphia after living there for five years and tried to move to New York City, which is a fantastic city. I love New York. Mm -hmm. Um, And getting that kind of like pulled away from me was devastating. And I was a little bummed. And then my friend called me up out of the blue and she was like, look, my friend needs a sublet just like moved to LA and I was like okay and I ended up I was auditioning for those TV shows and I was on The Voice and I remember telling my friend who uh, I didn't end up on The Voice let me just clarify Um, (laughs) but I was in like one of the rounds and I said you know what if they don't send me to LA I'm gonna move there myself and I went into the audition they said no thank you very much and I said and I had a show at the Saint in Asbury Park that night and at the show, I said, by the way, guys, I'm moving to L.A. <laughs> that's, that's when I decided. So I, uh, I felt it was time. Wow. That's crazy. Now, when you got out there, because L.A. is a big city, everybody's there doing the same thing you're doing. How did you end up connecting with people who want the same thing that you do? Did you find it super competitive or was it really receptive? was very receptive I have been very fortunate to find a lot of very like warm and like dedicated circles of people who really lift each other up so um, I found that I was in a really good space I moved in with a complete stranger oh my gosh um, who uh, I was the maid of honor in her wedding so it ended up working out (laughs) thank goodness Um, yeah I know Um, And she introduced me to a whole community of artists and um, she was a dancer and she connected me with some variety show people, people who like to put shows on. And we lived down the street from the Hotel Cafe. I lived right in the heart of Hollywood. Wow. Um, And it was, it was really a magical time. And I, I never felt discouraged. I felt like very alive in the art community that was there. So it, 
it was really great. And yeah, it wasn't disheartening at all. I don't think art should be competitive. I think it should be very collaborative and warm and welcoming. And maybe we all want the same things, but there's a place for everybody out there. So, Oh, I truly agree with you. But you know, it can be. Yeah. It can be the other way. So I'm glad wow. you found it a, in, in the good spot. Yes, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. So how did work happen for you? Like, how, how easy was it for you to support yourself when you got there? Um, I was lucky enough to be working uh, a pretty steady retail job. And that job transferred over and moved me out to Los Angeles. So when I moved here, I had... I had that and it allowed me to kind of just like day play as like a retail person and then go to shows in the nighttime. And, um, over time I started, you know, meeting other artists and then I started coaching artists. And now, um, on top of writing and performing, what I do is I coach, uh, artists. And then I also, you know, teach kids too, who are aspiring artists, uh, music. Yeah. That is wonderful. Now that must be super rewarding. It's really fun. It's it's really great. I have really loved it. It's been it's like a one on one, and I used to go to people's houses, but I've been fortunate enough to you know be able to stay connected to my clients over Zoom over the past million years <laughs> that we've been dealing with. I know it feels Everything. like a million. It really does. But uh, um, yeah, it's. It's really wonderful. I've I've had I've gotten to go to their shows and you know, I've had a few clients like moving away and gotten to like see them off in their like journeys. So it's it's been really wonderful. I'm I'm very lucky and I feel very grateful. And I have to say that, you know, several artists I spoke to during the whole lockdown people were working and they were working hard and they were getting the work and it was all virtually. So everybody's had to change it up, adapt. And it's so awesome that you were able to just flow into that. It sounds like with, you know, no effort at all. Like you just, it just happened for you. Yeah. I, I was, I mean, I won't say I wasn't nervous about it. Um, but I will say I have a really amazing, um, like clientele and they have been extremely patient with me um, because I know a lot of things are opening up and people are going back and um, I'm trying to play it as safe as I can. So I'm still doing everything virtually and and they're incredibly patient. Um, But yeah, it's been an amazing journey to see it unfold because now I've also been able to like branch out, you know, I have clients on the East coast and clients in Northern California. And it's, it's given me an opportunity to reach more than just the little bubble of Los Angeles. And it is, Uh, and it's so true because even though we went through what we did and we're still going through it in a way, mm -hmm. we've been able to open up those walls. And like you said, you have clients on the East coast and I'm sure you can connect with people all around the world if you wanted to. And and that eventually I'm sure will happen for you, but it's just so crazy how something that was so sad for a long time, for a lot of people has turned into an opportunity for others. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will say that like, if nobody, if, if you did absolutely nothing during this time but survive, like, you also did an amazing job. So I don't think this was, like, a time to churn out new things. And if you did, that is amazing. And I'm so grateful that I, I got an opportunity to, like, branch out. And, you know, I, I've started virtually producing some of my clients and, and learning that game. And, um, it you know, opened my eyes to different things that I could do, which, you know, eventually I would love to self-produce and um, taking this opportunity to kind of like build out my own home studio rather than working out of um, a new, you know, numerous studios. So um, I will say that if you gain something from this time or you just kind of float it, I think it's all a win because we just got to be safe. (laughs) That is a perfect way to look at it. Thank you for that. No, it really, really is. Now, in 2011, you had... 
I, I thought this was so awesome. The absolute honor of being nominated for a Grammy for being part of Joey Francesco's album, Never Can Say Goodbye, the music of Michael Jackson. It was nominated for Best Contemporary Jazz Album. Stanley Clark won that year. However, the experience for you must have been over the moon awesome. Uh, it it was the like highlight of my life. It it was amazing. I was still in college, um, and my voice teacher, um, Annie Sciola, she had called me while I was at work at that retail job, um, and she was like, hey, do you want to sing background vocals? And, you know, my dad always told me to say yes to an opportunity, and I was like, yeah, of course. Um, so... I ended up going out to the middle of nowhere. I took a train somewhere. Couldn't tell you where it was. It was on the studio somewhere. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we we sang a, a couple songs. And, and the one that our background vocals made it onto was The Way You Make Me Feel. Oh, my gosh. Which is the best. Oh, my <laughs> God. Of course it is. And, um, and yeah, so... I just thought it was cool. They were like, yep, and we're going to pay you by throwing your name on the album. And I was like, great. And just chalked it up to an experience that I got to have. And they're going to send me a CD. And how amazing was that? And great. Put it off in my mind. It was done. Um, a couple months go by, and my voice teacher just calls me out of the blue. And she's like, you need to meet me at Starbucks right now. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And she just puts this like email in front of me that's like, nominated like grammy nom and i was like what are these words like what is happening wow. and she left because she had to go teach and i just sat in this cafe for it felt like a million years i had a friend walk in and i was like oh my i have i was like come over here i have to tell you something and i whispered it to her i was like my god i was nominated for a grammy and she stood up on a table <laughs> and announced it to the whole starbucks <laughs> that's a good um, friend right there it was a, she's a great friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then my university, they flew me out. It was, uh, I got put up at the Georgian hotel in Santa Monica here in Los Angeles. Oh my gosh. And got to walk, like we got to walk on the red carpet and, you know, got to be, I was seated like 10 rows from the floor and, uh, Sarah Bareilles was sitting right in front of me. Who was one of my musical idols. And I was like, cool she's literally right there um did you get did to say to hi did you say hi to her i actually well she was like that was when we were like in the seated portion and i was like man that would be so cool and i ended up running into her in the lobby and chatting with her for a bit she's very cool perfect um yeah she took a photo with me she's like super nice oh um but yeah we did lose to stanley clark but stanley clark is an alumni of my university so oh i was like all right i'll allow <laughs> Yeah, right. You know, it's it's okay, Stanley. It's fine. Yeah, you're all right. Stan, you and I are, you, we're in with each other. It's fine. Totally, totally, yeah. How ironic it's, is that? He's an alumni? Like, that's mm -hmm. crazy. I know. What are the chances? <laughs> you, well, Samantha, it sounds like you're kind of all about that. Like, everything has just kind of flowed into where it's supposed to have been for you. Yeah, I would like to think that that's... Uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, maybe. from the outside looking in, that's how I'm seeing it. Love that. <laughs> now, speaking of good friends getting on tables in Starbucks, you have another really good friend who I I'm just completely floored with. I love her so much. Apollonia is such a huge supporter of you. How did you two meet? She, um, she and I met because she was looking for um, a musical coach. Um, she was working on one of her many projects that she's working on and needed somebody. And I was working for a contracting school at the, at the time. And she and I ended up, I ended up being her coach and she and I just super hit it off because she's so cool. She's like the coolest person I've met. And, uh, shout out to Apollonia. She's probably listening. She's literally the sweetest human. Um, yeah, and we started working together and um, realized that we really connected and she's up to a lot of projects and kind of asked me to come on board with her with these projects. So I've kind of been uh, her musical director and 
uh, for things that she's releasing. She and I did get to work on uh, this song that is coming out very soon. Um, it's called Fight for Love, and it's for the Children's Defense Fund. And because everything is closed down, we had to virtually produce. So she actually came over to my home studio, and we did her vocals, and um, I was lucky enough to, to get a chance to sing on some harmonies as well for that. Um, and that's with the, a, a group of great people, Kate Kelly and Art Ari Lanis. And, you know, it, it's just been amazing. And, and now she's working on um, her podcast. Yes. I don't know if you are connected with all of the stuff she's doing, but it's dropping on YouTube this Sunday. And oh, it is this Sunday because I didn't have a date. Mm, it's this Sunday that it's dropping. I don't have a time for you exactly. Um, well, maybe she'll give me one. Yeah, I probably should have checked in on that. But yeah, this this Sunday, it's on YouTube, Apollonia Studio 6. And yes. I've been her musical director through that and got to to compose a little thingy for it. And yeah, it's just been incredibly like amazing working with her. She's such a force in the industry. And as a human, she's such a light and she's just very calming and and passionate about working with others and and women and just kind of making it all happen and i'm just she's like one of my best friends <laughs> we go on walks like how how crazy is that i mean mm -hmm. to just you know what i gotta go i'm going for a walk with apollonia right now yeah. excuse me like how, right. who can say that you can <laughs> i can i can <laughs> It's so funny because when I met her, she just did not tell me who she was. Are she you was kidding? Like, all right. Yeah. She's like, all right, I like you. Here's who I am. <laughs> no. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what did you do when you discovered who she really was? I was, I kid you not, I was sitting at her kitchen table. Like my jaw was on the floor. I was like, what? <laughs> and of course she has like these beautiful, like, like murals and, and like, I should have known that it was like, Oh, I should have known. I just walk in and I like beeline it over and like play the piano and then I leave just doing my job. Just, I was trying to, she said that she was like trying to get her vocal chops up for like, like vocal parts. And I was like, oh, are you an alto, a soprano trying to, to get it out of her? And I didn't realize that she was like, no, I actually, I am Apollonia Colero, and I, I don't want to sing church music and I'm actually writing and <laughs> It was wild. I'm not an alto. I'm an Apollonia. I, absolutely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> she should use that. I mean, that is just crazy. So you're working with her right now. So she's got a ton of things in the works. And the song Fight for Love. Now, how did you both get involved with that? The Children's Defense Fund. That is amazing. And I had said to her the other day, I just love when artists are continuously giving back. So how did you both get connected with that project? Well, um, Kate Kelly and Art uh, Arilanes, they had contacted Apollonia um, about being a part of this. In it, It's like 100% of the proceeds go towards the Children's Defense Fund, and they want to get a lot of influential voices in the community, and, and they're friends of hers, and, and they had reached out to her. And she and I had been working together for, I don't know, two years at this point. And so she just forwarded me the email and she's like, hey, let's do this. Um, she knew that I was building out my studio and working on producing. So she came over and we got to, you know, cut her vocals. We did a couple of rehearsals and um, sent that over to them. Um, it's kind of in their hands now when, when the release date is. Um, but it was, uh, it was them contacting her, yeah just kind of like fell in her lap and I just lucky enough to be a part of the ride. That is so wonderful. Please keep in touch though and let me know when that song gets dropped so we can play yeah. it on the station because we would love to share it with the world. I mean, that is just amazing. And I love when I hear 100% the proceeds are going to that project. That makes me smile. Isn't that lovely? It yeah. is. It, and, and it's about kids and you know, how can you not want to help there? So, Samantha, what else do you have in the works for you in 2022? Well, I've been doing a lot of writing over the last year. Um, so my hope, I have, funny enough, my last show that I 
played was two years ago yesterday at the Hotel Cafe. I mean, I didn't know it was going to be my last show because of COVID. But right. um, my hope is, you know, fingers crossed, things end up kind of like calming down. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to keep, you know, producing. I, I would like to, I have some, some songs in the works to to put out a, a number of singles next year and um, working on my own producing and figuring all of that out. And my hope is to get back out there and um, play some shows. I, I do have this lovely, uh, I just moved and I have this lovely back area. And my hope is to also to be able to host songwriter nights here at my home and do my own sort of outdoor show where artists, can come and feel safe and supported and you know play music and have fun and collaborate it's all about the music and i think that is just it sounds like you're trying to reach out and build your circle and like you said support each other and that is truly what this is all about that's what music does i always say music just brings us all together and you're definitely a living example of that and we so appreciate it can you please tell everybody where they can get christmas in la where they can download it oh absolutely so wherever you stream music it's uh it's on spotify to stream it's on apple music you can also purchase it on itunes um it's going up on YouTube. I'm in the process of making a little lyric video. Great. Um, you can listen to it there as well. And it'll now be on kiki.fm. Yes. So you can <laughs> listen to it on the radio, which is wild. <laughs> well, we just, you know, when Al and I listen to it, we love your voice. It's definitely unique. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, you know, I'm, I'm feeling that East Coast vibe in there. I'm like, mm, she misses it just a tad. Just a tad, you know. <laughs> it's this time of year. It gets me every time. It's It feels, I have my Christmas tree. We put our Christmas tree up yesterday. and Or we decorated it yesterday. It's been here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we decorated it yesterday and it's like sunny and blue skies. And I walk outside and I'm just like, a long sleeve shirt and I'm like this just feels weird like it should not be December 17th today because it's like <laughs> it's not snowing right I'm gonna make you feel better okay so here in Rhode Island I think it hit 60 today so I just want you to know where we're kismets right now because wow. it's it's pretty weird and spring like here I will let you know that very strange so do you feel better <laughs> uh, <laughs> no <laughs> I think you guys still get some seasons in there. <laughs> I don't want any snow. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. The first one, oh, it's, look how nice it is. And then right. really, I'm done. I'm done when it starts right. getting muddy. It's all over yep. for me. Yep, yep. Go uh, <laughs> shovel the driveway. You know a whole lot of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk when, when it's happening then. You'll be like, um, I like it here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I will say it's not too bad, but I think I think the... Uh, it's it's the feeling of the season that yeah. is missed when when you don't really I it feels like time doesn't move, you know? It's it's very strange. I I almost don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> I think I get what you're saying though because it's constant. Mm-hmm. You know, just like if you had a glass of water in front of you, you never drank out of it. It just kind of stayed like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. kind of sorta. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. know. But you know, I'm sure it's just so beautiful there. And I wish you the very, very best with this song. Again, we're playing it here on Kiki.fm, Christmas in LA. Everyone, Samantha Aurelio, I truly appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. And you have such a cool story. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. This was such a treat. It was lovely chatting with you guys.